Hey guys, so welcome back to another video. So I wanted to make this video for quite some time, but there has been a lack of time, so I couldn't. So this video is sort of like a doubt clearing video because I realized that a lot of people, that a lot of you guys are actually quite new to this PC world and you're about to purchase your new laptop and you guys are kind of confused on some topics. I can tell that from the comments that I get, uh, some sarcastic and rude comments too. So uh, let's clear the doubt that most people are actually commenting these days. So uh, so ever since the release of Ryzen 4000, the market has quite kind of changed. The laptop market has, you know, turned over its head and a lot of people are actually interested in buying, you know, the AMD Ryzen 4000 H series of laptops, of laptop processors. And uh, the one thing that has been sort of, uh, you know, uh, what to say, sort of like a negative point or something like that is that most of these Ryzen, you know, 4000 laptops have been treated as second class citizens, if you can say that, if you can use that word. Most of these laptops come with uh, that come with these Ryzen 4000 series of chips are being paired with really, uh, you know, entry level graphics cards like GTX 1650 or 1650 Ti. Now, this has, you know, raised a question, you know, a sort of a doubt in people's mind. And I can see those comments in my videos. Uh, even I got messages about this bottleneck situation that many people are actually using. Uh, so like they are you know using this word bottleneck quite casually and they're not like being precise on what type of bottleneck are they referring to uh maybe they have heard this bottleneck thing somewhere in some video and they're kind of confused and conflicted so i can see these type of comments like what's the use of a ryzen 5 4600h or a ryzen 7 4800h if it is being paired with a gtx 650 uh they then they use this word like a, a bottleneck situation hoga or something like that you know they're not like concise and precise on what type of bottleneck they are referring to and the general idea that i'm getting from their uh, you know doubts is that as if due to the presence of a gtx 1650 the performance of the ryzen 5 4600h or the performance of a ryzen 7 4800 h will be you know they'll they'll be lower like they will be decreased like a ryzen 5 will like perform like an core i5 or something like that uh, so they think that because of the GTX 1650 or 1650 Ti, the performance of the Ryzen 5 4700 h or Ryzen 7 4800 h will like drop or something like that. So let me just clear this doubt really quickly before I can explain you the main topic. Uh, guys, nothing will happen. Whether your laptop is being paired with a GTX 1650 or a 1650 Ti or it is being paired with a, uh, you know, whatever RTX 2070 or something like that. The Ryzen 5 4600H will perform like a Ryzen 5 4600H. A Ryzen 7 4800H will perform like a Ryzen 7 4800H. They will not lose any kind of performance in, you know, in any kind of CPU intensive work. In a CPU intensive work, both the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 will perform just like they should, whether they are paired with a, you know, dedicated graphics card or not. Even if they don't have a dedicated graphics card, even if there is a laptop with no dedicated graphics, only Ryzen 5 and or Ryzen 7, they will perform like a Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7. So there is no performance loss because of a weak GPU. Yes, we should be sad that, you know, the Ryzen 4000 uh, series of laptop, Ryzen 4000 series of laptops are not being paired with, you know, good quality GPUs like 1660 Ti or RTX 2060, those kind of uh, GPU combination with Ryzen 4000 is quite rare. So we should be sad about that, but we should not be sad about the fact that, you know, the GTX 1650 will, you know, make the R Ryzen 5, you know, weak. It's not like that. Now let me explain. Now let me come to the main topic about this bottleneck situation. So guys, let me tell you, there are actually two types of bottlenecks. One is called a CPU bottleneck and the other is called a GPU bottleneck. Now, what is this bottleneck? A bottleneck is literally a bottleneck. So if you have a water bottle, it has a neck like this. Uh, I'm just going to show you. This is a water bottle. So it has a neck, right? So what this neck does is it limits the amount of water that comes out if you pour it. So here is, so this is the amount of information that you're sending to the CPU or the GPU, right? Now it can only process a limited amount of uh, information. So if you drop it like this, it'll, the water will come out only in limited quantity, right? So this is what you called a bottleneck situation. Like literally it's a bottleneck. So when does a CPU bottleneck happen and when does a GPU bottleneck happen? Uh, before that, let me tell you, in any kind of CPU intensive workload, like you're doing some kind of rendering in Cinema 4D or, like, you know, whatever requires a lot of CPU horsepower, you want your CPU to run at 100% usage 
and in a game in a in a situation where you're like gaming you want your gpu to to be running at 100% so when you pair a weak cpu with a really high end gpu for example you pair an intel core you know your dual core i3 with an rtx 2080 ti then you will see that the performance of the rtx 2080 ti in games will not be as advertised because the 2080 ti is way faster than the core i3 so the rtx 2080 ti is bottlenecking the cpu so it's called a cpu bottleneck that is when the gpu is way faster than the cpu that situation is called a cpu bottleneck and the gpu bottleneck is exactly the opposite so when you pair a really fast cpu with a weaker gpu that creates a gpu bottleneck for example if you pair an intel core i9 10900k with a uh, you know a gt 1030 then it will create a gpu bottleneck situation now there are two types of bottleneck now let me tell you one of the bottleneck is not good for anything there is one bottleneck that you should avoid and that is cpu bottleneck cpu you know you have read it from you know class 5 or something whenever you started reading computer that the cpu is the heart of the heart and brain of the you know computer or whatever so you never want your brain or your heart to be bottlenecked right so cpu bottleneck should be avoided but the GPU bottleneck is not necessarily a bad thing. So a GPU bottleneck in a gaming situation is actually a good thing. Why? Let me tell you. Because in a GPU bottleneck, the GPU will run at 100%. So when you are gaming, you want your GPU to be at 100%. You don't want your GPU to, to be running at like 70% usage. You want your GPU to run at 100%. Now, I don't know if you have ever watched, you know, real graphics cards reviews, uh, desktop graphics card reviews on the internet. You will always see that whatever graphics card is actually being reviewed is always paired with the fastest cpu possible to remove any kind of cpu bottleneck and to create a gpu bottleneck situation because they want you know to review the graphics card when the graphics card is being used 100 percent so you want 100 percent utilization of your graphics card whenever you are reviewing a graphics card you want to see the real power of your graphics card that's when you want your graphics card to run at 100 percent in games that's why whenever they review graphics cards whether it is logical or illogical but the correct technical way to review a graphics card is to pair the graphics card with the fastest cpu possible to create a gpu bottleneck situation so that you can come to know the real performance of your graphics card when your graphics card is being used 100 percent in games so it's not necessarily a bad thing guys when you will play games on your 1650 laptop with the ryzen 5 you'll see that in games the 1650 is being used if that game is quite up op is optimized i'm not talking about you know unoptimized ubisoft games which use the cpu quite a lot i'm talking about games which are properly optimized those games you will see use the gpu quite a lot so gpu will run at 100 percent and that's a really good thing you want your gpu to run to be fully utilized in games so that's not necessarily a bad thing so yeah that's all i had to say so basically it's kind of sad that you know high-end gpus are not available with ryzen 4000 right now but you should not be sad that because of the you should like clear this misconception that because of the 1650 or the 1650 ti the performance of the you know the ryzen 5 will drop or ryzen 7 will drop nothing like that will happen so did you get it so whenever you are having uh, you're playing a game you're having a gaming session you don't want any kind of cpu bottleneck you don't want your gpu to be you know uh, limited by the cpu the cpu should always should always uh, be like a cpu bottleneck should always be avoided even if like like for example if you have a uh, you know and like uh, intel core i5 10 300h laptop with paired with an rtx 2060 there will not be a bottleneck right the cpu and the gpu will both be utilized at in the same way but as soon as you want to do something else like for example maybe you want to stream your game that's when you'll see a cpu bottleneck right and then the gaming fps your fps that you're getting in games will drop significantly for example if you are like playing a game and you want to stream it and you are using a quad core i5 or something like that as soon as you will start streaming guys you'll see the fps of your game drop that's because your cpu is now getting bottlenecked uh, you know the cpu cannot take the load of both the rtx 2060 and your you know video encoding that is uh, game streaming so that's a situation you must always avoid avoid cpu bottleneck but gpu bottleneck it is not necessarily a bad thing so uh, i hope that i made that clear uh, if you have any doubts you can you know comment down below you can join my discord server and you can discuss over there so yeah that's it for this video guys thank you so much for watching my name is uptesh i'll catch you in the next one peace